Behind me is the storage site of the world's first nuclear reactor. And it's not anywhere in a desert in Nevada, but just 19 miles away from the densely packed city of Chicago. So how and why did this end up here? Just three months prior to the bombings of Pearl Harbor, physicist Enrico Fermi was consulting Edward Teller about the concept of igniting nuclear fusion. Teller then conveyed his ideas and conversations with Fermi to Julius Robert Oppenheimer at the conference in 1942 to develop the world's first nuclear weapon. Under the Manhattan Project, the United States government put the world's smartest available scientists into a group not knowing what kind of weaponry they would be developing. Physicists that were forced into exile by Nazi Germany mostly ended up moving all across the United States and prominently the city of Chicago. At the University of Chicago, 60 feet under an abandoned football field, some of the most covert research of its time happened at that moment. And this experiment was called Chicago Pile 1, also known as CP1. CP1 was graphite blocks organized 20 feet tall containing smaller blocks of uranium and it took nearly two weeks for everything to be arranged perfectly. And then one year after the bombings of Pearl Harbor in December of 1942, 49 scientists including Fermi himself successfully ignited the world's first nuclear chain reaction. After the success of this experiment, scientists needed to establish a plutonium production plant and it couldn't be too near the city as there was thousands of people that were going to be put at risk. That brings us to the place I am standing at today, nicknamed Site A. Site A is inside of Argonne Forest and over a thousand acres were leased from Cook County. After the lease had been finalized, they realized that this site was just way too small for plutonium production and so what ended up happening is this site was used for smaller research purposes. After CP1 was built under the football field, they completely tore it apart and brought it 19 miles over to Site A to further use it for research for CP2 and CP3. Not too many years later, CP1 was finally decommissioned and buried underneath Site A. There was also another site called Site M and that was used for a lower grade of radioactive material. In 1998, the United States Department of Energy lifted all of the fencing in this area and opened this site to the public and they finally deemed it safe. And this site will always go down in history as the world's first nuclear material burial site.